All right, so I just got a new $6,000 Mac Studio M1 Ultra, and today I'm gonna to be comparing it to my $6,000 16-inch MacBook Pro M1 Max. And the goal today is to stack up each of these as a video editing machine in Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Final Cut Pro X to see which one is the better editing machine. And then I'll give you my overall thoughts on which one I recommend buying for video editing specifically and what spec upgrades I think are worth getting in each package. Speaking of specs, here are the specs for each of these machines. This is what I chose for $6,000. Obviously with the Mac Studio, you also need to buy a monitor, keyboard, and mouse separately. So that's one immediate downside of this guy, but I already have those items, so I'm not factoring that into this price. But with the MacBook Pro Max, I've maxed out all the specs. So 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, 64 gigs of RAM, and eight terabytes of SSD storage. Now I realize eight terabytes of storage is overkill, but I like to host all my editing assets locally, so I don't have to have an external hard drive dangling all the time. So that's just a luxury I'm willing to pay for, but definitely not necessary for most. And then specs on the Mac Studio Ultra are as follows, 20 core CPU, 64 core GPU, 64 gigs of RAM, and four terabytes of SSD storage. So I did about half of the available upgrades on this one, but not quite fully maxed out. And as I'll point out at the end, I probably shouldn't have even done some of the upgrades that I did. And before we dive into the actual speed test of these two as editing machines, first, my overall thoughts about the function differences between the two. Now, obviously the laptop is a lot more portable and versatile as it has a screen built in. I've been using this MacBook Pro Max now as my main computer for the past few months. And it's been really nice to be able to just plug into an external monitor and hard drives when I'm at my desk, but also be able to take it on the road and still have that same amazing editing speed with me anywhere I go. One small complaint would be that there aren't a ton of ports. You only get three USB-C ports and one HDMI and one card slot. This gets the job done, but I do find myself wanting more USB-C and at least one USB. Now compare that to the Mac Studio Ultra, you have six total USB-C ports, two USB ports, HDMI, Ethernet, and a card reader. So it really does feel a lot more pro of a machine to be used as a main workhorse machine versus the MacBook Pro feels a little bit more limiting in this regard. So ports versus portability is probably one of the biggest trade-offs between these two machines. Just depends on which one's most important to you. I do, however, love how small and compact this Mac Studio is, especially compared to my Mac Pro. You could easily take the Mac Studio with you on the road, and as long as you have access to a monitor elsewhere, it's a great on-the-go machine. I also love that two of the USB-C ports and the card reader are on the front. I hated having to look around to the back of the Mac Mini to plug in drives and so forth. So I think this is a great design choice on the Mac Studio. The other function the aspect I care about is fan noise levels, and they are both super quiet, except when exporting or doing a super heavy task, the MacBook Pro fans pick up and get quite a bit louder than the studio. So the studio is definitely the quieter machine. Now onto the editing speed test. We're gonna be running the test with a Red Raptor 8K RAW file, a Canon R5 8K 10-bit log file, a Sony A7S III 4K S-Log3 file, and a C70 120 frame per second 4K file. This way you can see a variety of codecs and how they perform on each of the machines. And first we're gonna be running tests on Premiere Pro, then we'll compare it to how it does in DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro X as well. So first test inside of Premiere Pro is playback. At full resolution, both machines drop some frames on the 8K red clip and both play the remaining clips at full resolution without any dropped frames. And at half resolution, they both play the red 8K clip without any frames dropped. So as far as playback goes, they both did equally awesome. Keep in mind, all of these clips have a color correction applied to make it more realistic. Next test I like to do is scrubbing through the footage. Again, both machines performed pretty similarly. They each seem to scrub through all of the clips pretty flawlessly, except for the C70 clips, they'd get hung up a little bit. Slight edge to the studio, but again, both did pretty well. Next test was applying an effect like warp stabilizer. The MacBook Pro stabilized a 10 second 4K Sony A7S III clip in 25 seconds, and the Mac Studio did it in 29 seconds, so a slight edge for the MacBook Pro. Next test was exporting speeds. I did a few different tests here and found some interesting results. First, I exported one minute of all these clips combined and the MacBook Pro did it in 42 seconds versus the Mac Studio in just 26 seconds. So about 60% faster for the studio. So this is where you really get to see the advantage of those 20 cores
cores versus the 10 cores. Then I tried exporting out just one minute of an 8K red clip, and it took the MacBook 44 seconds and the Mac Studio 21 seconds. So for that specific codec, the Studio was over two times faster. Then I exported out just one minute of the C74K clip, and the MacBook Pro did it in 23 seconds, and the Mac Studio in 21 seconds. So for that specific codec, for whatever reason, the Studio didn't seem to be optimized for it, and so it wasn't much better. And that's an important thing to keep in mind in all of these tests, is it really depends on what software you're using, whether or not they're updated to be optimized for this Ultra chip, and most softwares at this point have not been optimized yet. It also depends on what codec of footage you're editing, as each one will react different with different softwares and machines. That's why I like to give you a look at a variety of footage, so you can spot some of those differences. So now if we throw DaVinci and Final Cut Pro X into the mix and show the results from the same tests I just ran in Premiere Pro, we find out that with the Mac Studio, DaVinci and Final Cut both have smoother playback and scrubbing than Premiere did with the 8K RED file, and we also find that Premiere was by far the fastest at exporting RED 8K clips to a 4K H.264 codec, and I would say, well, maybe that's just because the export settings might be a little bit different, but then it was the exact opposite when exporting out a C74 4K clip in the same export settings. Both DaVinci and Final Cut Pro X performed three times faster than Premiere Pro, so it looks like those softwares are just better optimized for the C70 codec, while Premiere Pro is better optimized for the RED codec. And then on the MacBook Pro, we see the same results as the Mac Studio on playback, and then similar differences between softwares on the RED export, just about two times slower than the Mac Studio on each software. And then with the C70 export, where Premiere Pro showed similar speeds between machines, DaVinci was better optimized on both machines, and Final Cut was best optimized on the Mac Studio. So overall, I'd say DaVinci seems to be the best overall optimized for both of these machines, but as you can see, all three have their areas that they are more optimized than others, so it's hard to say that one software is overall better than the other, as it really just depends on what machine and codec combination you are using. So here are my overall thoughts. The MacBook Studio is anywhere from 60 to 200% faster than the MacBook Pro in most exporting tests, but pretty similar in most playback and scrubbing scenarios. So I'd say if you're exporting out two to three hour long podcast episodes every single day, then the Studio could save you a good chunk of time. But if you're exporting out simple 10 minute YouTube videos, the MacBook Pro Max is already so fast that you're probably not gonna care if you only have to wait a few more extra minutes for an export. Now, if your edits are very visual effect heavy and it usually takes you hours for exports or renders, then again, that increased speed of the 20 cores might be worth it to you. But if you do most of your editing on the go, then the portability of that MacBook is gonna be your best bet, knowing that the Mac Studio isn't that much more powerful overall as an editing machine. So you really can't go wrong with either of these machines. They are both beasts and ultimately, it's gonna come down to what software you use and which codecs are optimized for that software. If and until some of these softwares are more optimized for the Ultra chip, I'd personally choose the MacBook Pro Max as the better buy for the type of work that I do. As a video editor doing YouTube videos and client work that's not super graphic intense. And I think that the portability of the laptop is a standout advantage for the MacBook Pro. Although now that I do own the faster Mac Studio Ultra, it will most likely become my main editing workhorse. As for specs that I recommend getting on either of these machines, for the MacBook Pro Max, I would get a 16 inch, just more real estate for editing. I would get the Max. I think the Pro is also a beast, but you definitely get more speed out of the Max. And I would upgrade to the 64 gigs of RAM. 32 gigs will get you by most of the time, but even with my 64 gigs of RAM, when I was working on a 20 minute documentary, I had my computer warn me that I was out of memory memory several times while editing in Premiere. So to avoid that from happening too often, 64 gigs will keep you safer. Then one terabyte of SSC storage will get you by most of the time. But with that setup, you have a beast editing machine for under $4,000 that you can take with you on the go. As for the Mac Studio, you could get basically the same specs that I just mentioned for $1,000 less and spend 2,800 and then pick up your own budget monitor, a mouse and keyboard, and you have a beast editing machine for just over $3,000. And honestly, this is what I'd probably recommend if you're looking for best bang for buck, is go with the Mac Studio Max instead of the Ultra. I just don't know if the Ultra is worth the extra money, but if you do want the best of the best and do decide to go with the Ultra, if I could go back, I probably wouldn't have upgraded the 64 core GPU. I just don't do very GPU intensive work. So that's $1,000 I could have saved. And I'm glad I didn't get the 128 gig RAM, as I mentioned, 64 gigs gets me by 99% of the time. So for video editors going with the Ultra, 
I think the base model configuration at $4,000 is going to perform amazing and be your best bang for buck. So there you have my overall thoughts and tests. Hopefully this was helpful for you to decide which one you should buy and hopefully I helped you save some money on upgrades you don't need. For more buying guide recommendations on computers and camera equipment, make sure to check out our ultimate online film school at fulltimefilmmaker.com where we have over 600 tutorials, including a 35 video series on how to build and grow a profitable YouTube channel. The reason I can afford to buy a lot of this latest camera and computer tech is because I make a lot of that money back in AdSense and other sales of products that I sell on my YouTube channel. As an example, here's my latest computer comparison video that I did that made almost $4,000 just in AdSense so far. And here's a camera review that I did that has made over $8,000 so far in AdSense. So if you'd like to learn how to make money on YouTube to help fund your business purchases, we have a mini course called YouTuber Pro that teaches my entire YouTubing workflow. And and it's also included in that full course, Full-Time Filmmaker as well. Links are in the description to both. But there you have it folks. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. And if you have any further questions, please let me know. 